something exists outside our reality, which uh, influences our reality in a most significant way through all phenomena related to electricity and magnetism. Fifty years ago, three Dutch physicists uh, devised and realized an experiment which demonstrates exactly this in a most beautiful way. From the present point of view, what they did, because they succeeded eventually, what they did is to demonstrate that um, something exists beyond our reality which does manifest itself in our reality. We had a meeting once on the fifth floor of the building in the, uh, of, of the laboratory and there was a, a plane in front of us near the laboratory and there was a thunderstorm starting and we put our chair at the window and looked at the thunderstorm for about a quarter of an hour and then it was over, so, uh, much rain and all that and, uh, and he said, well, I have no time now. So the time is up, <laughs> and that was it. I remember that he looked at the storm, didn't say a word, he looked at the storm as, as a child, curious what happened. And, and, uh, yeah, and that was his, his, his nature. At this time, Casimir was working at the Natuurkundige Laboratorium, which is the research lab of Philips in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. There was a very gifted experimental physicist working there, uh, by the name of Professor Marcus Sparnay, and um, they decided to try to actually uh, experimentally demonstrate that this Casimir force exists. Gravitational and electromagnetic forces are relayed through the exchange of a special type of particles. In the case of the electromagnetic field, these particles are called photons, which we know as light. Um, but the photons that transport the electromagnetic field are uh, a very special type of photons which exist beyond our reality. So they are, for this reason, called virtual photons. Yeah. I happen to know a very old gentleman who was a friend of the father of Casimir. Mm -hmm. And as this old gentleman met the, the old family Casimir, and their, our Casimir, Hendrik Casimir, was laying on the sofa doing nothing. And his father said, no, I can't blame him. He knows everything and he doesn't work. But uh, I've been told that uh, the Casimir effect, as it is called today, was calculated in his car coming from here to his house in Heze, a village further on. That Casimir worked over there, on the fifth floor. In physics, we are constantly trying to improve our notion of uh, nature and reality. And we ask ourselves questions like, why does the Earth uh, stay on its orbit around the Sun? And so every time we get new answers, but every time we get these new answers, we also have to pose uh, new questions, like how does the Earth know where the Sun is? So we, we always, we have constantly have to improve our, our models on, of reality. So. So, hello, Sparay. Leuk yeah. dat u daar bent. Ja. So, it's nog niet so lang geleden. Nee, 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 maar nou met een professionele ploeg. Dus ja, 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 kom binnen. Ja. Kijk, heb ik goed die ook. Oh ja, die is er ook. Around here, you have many people of the NAT lab who have been working on, on features which have become of interest 30, 40, 50 years after they had started it. For instance, over there, uh, we have uh, Kramer, who has developed a compact disc. Then we have Eddie Dehaan, who developed the, the color television, the color television tubes, the camera tubes. And over there, we have uh, just a few houses further, we have Stiltius. Uh, who was the first, or one of the first men uh, to, to work on uh, light emitting diodes. I think as you are sit there, I even the blumen. Yeah. So. This is a bit
the Overbeek had the idea that uh, the attractive interaction between the particles was wrongly calculated in the past, or then past, because what people forgot, for, had forgotten there was that the, uh, the expansion of the field needs some time. And Casimir took up this idea and he calculated the Casimir effect. Uh, he calculated not in the way Overbeek suggested, but he uh, introduced the uh, general field theory as a, as, a, as a method to calculate the forces between two atoms. The difference between the, uh, between the field before and after introduction was the Casimir effect. In his uh, concept of how to describe these forces, he then made a really important shift. Um, he, he, he left classical electromagnetic uh, theory or way of describing things and um, really applied what we now call quantum field theory. A few years later he made this, a similar calculation but only in four pages between two metal surfaces and that was what I tried to, uh, to measure. So if you bring uh, two plates together in vacuum of a distance of about a micron or less, then they feel a force. And this force is caused by the fact that within the two plates there are only a few different uh, types of uh, uh, modes of virtual photons possible, while outside the plates there is a large number of modes possible. So one could say that they exert a pressure on these plates uh, it's still there, the classical equipment which I found uh, somewhere in the house. It's now 50 years old, or more than 50 years old. Uh, it consists of two plates which you have to bring close together. The lower plate was suspended on a heavy pedestal in order to damp vibrations, which was mounted on a very ingenious lever system. And the table could be moved with a screw system, a lever system, so to speak, with a uh, precision of less than five nanometers. On the upper plate is suspended on a, on a soft spring, which is obeying Hooke's law. And by moving uh, the lower plate towards the upper plate a tiny little bit, um, the excursion of the spring was measured and this uh, demonstrated very beautifully that with a decreasing distance between the two plates an increasing force, Casimir force, uh, is actually real. Well, there must be some electrical wire. Yeah. Should I take some coffee? Downstairs? No, no. It's a very old equipment. Uh, the turn it. Yes, that's, a, that's right. Casimir's law says that the force of two plates at a distance of d of, say, one micron or so, that the Casimir force then is equal to a constant over the distance to the fourth power. And the constant in the case of metals is 0.013 when the distance is expressed in uh, microns. Now this figure on the dotted line gives the Casimir law between two metal plates. Here uh, vertically you see the, the force measured in dynes per square centimeter and horizontally the distance between the two plates. Here the plates are together, are sticking together, and here the distance is very large. So you see uh, that measurement is done with an accuracy of about uh, 100 nanometers or a little more. You see that there is on the whole agreement with uh, Casimir's law.
most technological applications that we use in our daily lives um, right now are based on fundamental research driven by purely by the curiosity of scientists uh, in those days, um, which would not exist now if, if they hadn't had this curiosity and would simply try to find out how things work. It's really quite dangerous to neglect this aspect of research, to cut down on fundamental research, because uh, we don't know what we deprive ourselves of eventually.